So it'll be great to have you uh, be part of that happy hour Zoom as we uh, do have uh, some things to, to share in our lives each week. And so we'll be sharing some of that um, tonight during happy hour Zoom. Also, uh, tomorrow we do have our adult forum at 12 o'clock. Um, again, that's Zoom. We'll be uh, going, we'll be finishing our dialogues on race, meeting as a congregation uh, for that tomorrow at 12. And then tomorrow evening at 6.30, we do have our SALT Zoom, um, and that's from 6.30 to about 8 uh, for our youth um, tomorrow evening. Yeah. Good to have you with us, Pastor Sarah. Thank you. Uh, we want to say a big thank you to all the people behind the curtain, too, who are working on um, stuff for technology and our altar guild. And Russ is here tonight doing music. And so um, we're really thankful for everyone who's here. Mm -hmm. Um, we want to invite you to take a look at that connection card. Um, it's a Google file, a Google form that you can fill out um, any time during our service. Um, we've kind of we figured out that um, that it can be hard for some of you to fill it out at the beginning of the service. Um, so we're going to post it both at the beginning and at the end. It's what we used to call our pink slip when we were here together. Um, so it's just some basic information, name, address, as well as some things that you yeah. can sign up for. Um, an RSVP for. Mm -hmm. um, so make sure you take a few minutes to fill out that card. There's a room for prayer requests on there um, as well. And so you can um, put prayer requests or other information you want either one of us pastors or the office staff to know. And I mean, we you can fill we, that out anytime. Yeah, we do understand that if you're on, a, on any kind of pad screen thing or a phone, um, when you click on the connection card, it takes you off of our site. And so you lose the live stream. And so that's why we're, we're going to put the connection card at the very end of the service in the chat. So you can hit that and leave um, the live stream uh, to fill out that connection card at the end of the service. We also have some announcements in our Pinch of Salt as well as our newsletter that went out this last week. Um, sharing more about things that we're expecting coming up in our life together in the month ahead. So make sure you check that out. Mm -hmm. um, I'm really excited about our food drive in November. Um, we're going to be looking for ways or looking for you all to help us through the ministries of this congregation um, help people have a good Thanksgiving this year. So there's more information about that um, in the Salt Shaker newsletter and ways that you can get involved with helping to make sure people have um, food around Thanksgiving yep. especially. Um, and so check that out. Um, and as Pastor Manuel shared, um, we were hoping to share a stewardship temple talk tonight. We're going to put that off till next week and share a little bit more as a part of our pledge weekend um, and we have a really fun interview with um, Bill Spar, who's a World War II veteran sharing some of his stories that we'll be compiling and um, being able to share with you too as well um, but we do just want to invite you to take a few moments to read with our about our financial update um, the reality is just like all organizations um, St. Andrews has been feeling um, this COVID time and the, the financial strain of it as well. Um, so we want to make sure that you all are aware of our financial circumstances and want to recognize too that um, all the ministries that happen here are possible because of your giving and your stewardship. Um, we aren't yeah. supported by any outside bodies. This is your church supported by your giving and your gifts. So I want to thank you for those of you who do give and want to invite those of you who are still considering praying about giving. Um, this would be a really great time um, for you to learn more about the, the gift that it is to be able to give um, to and through the ministries of St. Andrews. So um, it's very easy to give and we'll um, share more information about that in our stewardship packets, which will be emailed as well as mailed out to those people who don't use email. Um, and we want to invite you to prayerfully consider um, giving to St. Andrews. Um, and especially um, during this time when a lot of us, this is one of the best ways that we can connect with people and share um, and participate in the things that we care about is through our giving right now. It's a safe, easy way. So we want you to prayerfully consider that. And, and like we said, we'll be having our pledge weekend next weekend. We're going to talk more about that. And then our, our giving emphasis is a part of our stewardship giving outside the box today. You're going to be sharing about restoration. restoration. Yep. So we're excited to talk about this biblical witness of God's work in restoring creation and relationships. Um, we don't have any prayer quilts, right? So, so we'll nope. share more prayer updates during our prayer time. So now we'll uh, turn to our call to worship and Russ Link and his song, Till.
Till I listen to the music you play in my life. Didn't know that I love you like I do. Till I looked at all the color you paint on my world. Didn't know that I love you like I do. If the answer comes tomorrow. There'd be no complaint for me Oh Lord, you know that it's true You have set aside my sorrow And your love is all I see How could I not trust in you Till I thought of all the good things Stop to listen, or I've never looked around. I don't know how things might be, and without some reminiscing about the joys that I found, you might not be hearing me till I open all my senses. To all that you are Didn't know that I love you Like I do Thank you, Russ. Tyler, I'm sorry, do you want us to have our microphones on, or is this okay? For, for now, it's fine. Next time. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, everyone, again. Uh, we'll continue now with our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sins. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance, and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our song of adoration is drawn to the light. Maybe some of you have a hymnal hanging around at home, and if you do, it's ELW number 593.
just when we thought all would be lost, we were drawn to the light of God. Drawn is the light, God is the light, drawn to the morning, the morning. Glory is the light, oh what a sight to be drawn to the light of God. How can we tell? Spells gently compels, and we're drawn to the light of God. Dawn is in sight, gone is the night, drawn to the light of the morning. Glory is so bright, oh, what a sight to be drawn to the light of God. Where is the sun? to come, life has begun when we're drawn to the light of God. Dawn is in sight, dawn is the night, drawn to the light of the morning. Oh, it's a bright, oh, what a sight to be drawn to the light of God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God of justice and love, you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need and awaken us to the needs of others through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Okay, and um, our first reading for today from the book of Genesis is going to be read. Um, by Rachel Lyon. I think many of you know Rachel grew up here in this congregation, uh, but she's now serving as the executive assistant to the bishop for Pacifica Synod, Bishop Andy Taylor. And so it's kind of fun. If any of you haven't been to the Synod office, she shared this reading as she's our lector this week from the chapel space there at the Synod office. So I just want to give a little bit of context that she's got this really beautiful setting. Um, she doesn't, her apartment doesn't look like that. She's at work. <laughs> she's at the chapel space. Um, sharing this story of Genesis, and again, this is a part of our stewardship emphasis for tonight about this idea of restoration um, and giving outside the box. And so, whenever you are ready, we will share our first reading. The reading is from the 33rd chapter of Genesis. Now Jacob looked up and saw Esau coming, and four hundred men with him. So he divided the children among Leah and Rachel and the two maids. He put the maids with their children in front, then Leah with her children, and Rachel and Joseph last of all. He himself went on ahead of them, bowing himself to the ground seven times until he came near his brother. But Esau ran to meet him and embraced him and fell on his neck and kissed him and they wept. When Esau looked up and saw the women and children, he said, who are these with you? Jacob said, the children whom God has graciously given your servant. Then the maids drew near, they and their children and bowed down. Leah likewise and her children drew near and bowed down. And finally, Joseph and Rachel drew near, and they bowed down. Esau said, What do you mean by all this company that I met? Jacob answered, To find favor with my Lord. But Esau said, I have enough, my brother. Keep what you have for yourself. Jacob said, No, please, if I find favor with you, then accept my present from my hand, for truly, to see your face is like seeing the face of God, since you have received me with such favor. Please accept my gift that is brought to you, because God has dealt graciously with me, 
and because I have everything I want. So he urged him and he took it. Then Esau said, let us journey on our way and I will go alongside you. But Jacob said to him, my Lord knows that the children are frail and that the flocks and herds which are nursing are a care to me. And if they are overdriven for one day, all the flocks will die. Let my Lord pass on ahead of his servant and I will lead on slowly according to the pace of the cattle that are before me and according to the pace of the children until I come to my Lord in Seir. So Esau said, let me leave with you some of the people who are with me. But he said, why should my Lord be so kind to me? So Esau returned that day on his way to Seir but Jacob journeyed to Succoth and built himself a house and made booths for his cattle. Therefore, the place is called Succoth. Word of God, word of life. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 25th chapter. Thank you. Jesus said to the disciples, then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight... There was a shout. Look, here is the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came. And those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. The gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord. And now uh, I have a special sermon for you this evening. And so we'll go to that sermon right now. And thank you, Rachel, for your reading this evening as well. This morning I woke up to the sound of the wind and the smell of the rain outside our bedroom windows. It feels like it has been a good long time since we've had any substantial rain here in San Diego. And there was something cleansing and refreshing about it. It gave me energy for this weekend. Over the last many eight months, it has often been a struggle for me, and I think for all of us, to find those places of renewal and restoration. And there is something about the rain that just seems so generous. The rain washes off the dust of the long, hot summer and brings out the green and new life that is to come. It is representative of the cycle and seasons of life that come and go, but also change. The rain will restore moisture to the dry, parched, cracked land here in San Diego that has been waiting in anticipation, hibernating, and it will soon begin to blossom and broom, bloom and green. This weekend in our stewardship emphasis, we focus on the biblical theme of restoration <clears throat> and the God who makes all things new. While these two stories, the reunion of the twin brothers, Jacob and Esau in Genesis, and Jesus' parable, the 10 bridesmaids in Matthew, do not seem to have much in common. They are both stories 
of restoration. In fact, the Bible in its entirety is a story of restoration. For in the beginning, in the book of Genesis, in the story of Adam and Eve, and the story of Scripture is a story of God's work to restore God's people into a right relationship with Creator and all creation. And for us as Christians, the ultimate intersection of God's work of restoration is the story of Jesus' death on the cross and then the empty tomb. The story, the salvation of the world, the gift of grace and love. In our text from Genesis for today, Jacob comes literally limping into this 33rd chapter of Genesis following his wrestling or struggling with an angel, or some would say wrestling with God in the dark of the night. And here, Jacob elaborately prepares and waits for the great with great apprehension to meet his estranged twin brother, expecting the worst as he waits patiently. Jacob, who some would say was the great manipulator, comes to meet his brother, who he had to manipulate out of both his blessing and his inheritance. And Jacob now struggles with his inner self about who he is and what he has done and how he has wronged his brother Esau. how he will greet him on the plain. What would you expect from Esau is that he would come with a sword, but instead Esau greets Jacob with a hug, restoring what had been fractured, what had been a fractured relationship. <coughs> Our gospel lesson from Matthew was another waiting game. A waiting game, however, in the strange parable of Jesus. The bridesmaids are waiting for the groom. And here Jesus describes the faithful task of waiting and watching and maybe even sleeping with enough oil in our lamps. When we read this parable in the light of Jesus' earlier teaching from the Gospel of Matthew and the Sermon of the Mount, and specifically the Beatitudes, we gain some insight as to what ca characterizes those who recognize the Bridegroom, the Lord. The Spirit is the Spirit of the cross that disrupts all of our categories, all of our judgmental predispositions. The life into which the Beatitudes invite us is a life not centered on our works, not on our faith, but on the cross of Christ and how God is glorified through our lives lived. In many of his writings, Martin Luther talks about how central the cross is to the life of the church. It is a life that is characterized by choices that make it clear God is the actor and the giver of life. In Luther's works, a community that centers its life on the cross is a community that knows suffering. He writes, they must endure every misfortune and persecution, all kinds of tri trials and evil from the devil, the world and, and the flesh. As the Lord's prayer indicates, by inward sadness, timidity, fear, outward poverty, contempt, illness, and weakness in order to become like their head, Christ. Those who are enduring misfortune, even poverty for Christ's sake, are not the ones who will be quick to judge others. Judgment is purely reserved for God. Grace is in the cross that lets shine forth a light, a light so unique that people do not praise our good works, 
but rather praise God who is acting and giving life in the midst of suffering, life in the midst of death, opening the door to those who have engaged in the way of the cross, who have engaged in the way of death. The world cannot understand this way. It does not recognize the Lord, though it continually cries out, Lord, Lord. Restoration is not a one-time event at some end point, but rather is a continuous event that involves us, the community of Christ, in our baptismal call, living in the light of Christ, in mercy, not judgment. The feast to which we are invited is the Lord's Supper. This is the already and the not yet, the great feast that is to come. Heaven is here with us, and we, if our eyes are open and we are awake to it, is a bit or a taste of what is to come when we are gathered together in the presence of the divine. Well, I decided today to preach out here at Fort Rosecrans National Cemetery because, well, for one, because this Wednesday is Veterans Day, and we will recognize the ne their next weekend in our music and our special interview we did with a World War II veteran, Bill Spar. But really, I could not think of no greater example of stewardship than the individuals buried here. Both those who served in uniforms and those who partnered with them as they sacrificed time, knowledge, and some of their very lives to protect our Constitution. They each struggled as they served our country to know how to best steward their leadership to serve others and to serve others in their ranks. And we all learn from those who have gone before us, those who gave gifts for the benefit of future generations, and not simply for their own immediate gain. And St. Andrews understands and celebrates that this restorative understanding of stewardship, returning what we have to God. Good stewardship practices as we have here at St. Andrews restore healthy relationships between people and creation and God. Lives are transformed in the giving of gifts to change and repair our broken relationships and our broken world. It is in the giving of our gifts that we are reconciled to God and find a renewed sense of joy and purpose. Restoration brings healing, and healing brings new life as our biblical te text witness for us today. Chaos, pain, and suffering has always been and will always be a part of our broken world, but the love and grace of God has always been and will always be part of our world too. And so the work of restoration, the way of the cross, the way of grace, is ongoing. It is Esau's radical forgiveness that brings restoration and the fear that Jacob has been struggling with all of his adult life and it finally subsides. This moment becomes a place of peace and joy because of the grace given to Jacob from his brother Esau. The work we do together in restoration is in response to the grace we first received in our baptism that restored our relationship with the divine. As Bono writes in the U2 song, Grace, Grace, she takes the blame, she covers the shame, removes the stain. Grace finds beauty in everything. 
because grace makes beauty out of ugly things. Grace finds goodness in everything. May each of us recall this gift of God's grace, and may it be like rain falling and washing away the dust, restoring our dry and cracked hearts, carrying with it the promise and potential for new life to take root and to bloom. Amen. Let me shade the sun from your eyes Bring you something tall and cool Don't you know that I love it I just want to be with you Wouldn't want to change it Move or rearrange it Hope you feel the same way too Any other choices won't do I just want to be with you you've been I know everything you do doesn't stop me from loving I just want to be with you there's no doubt about it couldn't do without it every day is fresh and new any other choices won't do I just want to be with you Walking, talking, moving, grooving, taking time to look at all that we see. Smiling, styling, booking, cooking, no one else is here, it's just you and me. Lazy morning, long afternoon, underneath that baby blue. Don't you know that I love it? I just want to be with you Forget about the old days Strange and sad and cold days When you didn't have a clue Any other choices won't do I just want to be with you Walking, walking, talking, talking, moving Moving, grooving, grooving, smiling Smiling, styling, styling, hooking, cooking. Let me shake the sun from your eyes. Bring me something tall and cool. Don't you know that I love it? I just want to be with you. I just want to be with you. confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We do have a few prayer updates to share with you tonight. We're praying for healing for David Korberg and Genevieve. Um, David is a former St. Andrew's pastor and Genevieve his wife who both tested positive for COVID-19. Um, David is in the hospital, but is expected to come home soon, and Genevieve is feeling better. So praying for their complete healing um, with no long-term effects. 
Um, we're also um, praying and giving thanks to God for the life of Marianne Nelson. Um, this is the wife of Dean Nelson, who passed away. Um, Dean Nelson was the Bishop of Southwest California Synod for many years, and his wife Marianne passed away this morning um, in the hospital um, following a long-term struggle with lupus and um, complications from lupus. And so we're lifting up um, Bishop, former Bishop Nelson and his entire family in prayer right now in their grief and their loss. Longing for Christ's reign to come among us, we pray for God's power to come upon the church, the world, and all in need. Holy God, rouse us to prayer and praise, both when we gather for worship and when we cannot. Sustain all those who help us to worship at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Creator, we pray for the restoration of all creation. Heal our planet, protect natural habitats, and living things of every kind. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Peacemaker, give peace to our conflicted nation. Cure our nation from prejudice of every kind. Teach us how to abide together as one diverse people and restore families and friendships torn apart by political differences. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Sovereign, grant that all newly elected officials of government will work faithfully for the common good. Give them wisdom, honesty, hum and humility. Illumine their convictions with the spirit of cooperation. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Holy Protector, bless the observance of Veterans Day. Bring armatists to areas of conflict and keep safe the military who serve in harm's way. Give to all the armed forces a dedication to defend the common good Heal the wounds, both physical and emotional, experienced by active and retired service members. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Holy healer, bring health and wholeness to those who are sick, those who live with chronic pain, and the thousands who daily contract COVID-19. Console those who feel lonely or abandoned. Protect those living in resettlement camps. Uphold medical care workers, especially those in nations lacking in resources. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Holy beloved, form us into a people close to your heart and receive our prayers now through our silent petitions. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Receive these prayers for the same of him who lived, died, and rose, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. We share a sign of peace tonight. Peace. We want to wish you all peace. 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 Everyone peace. who's here. We wish you all peace in your homes this evening as well. Um, as we shared at the beginning, um, as we continue with our time of offering, now is a great time for you to prayerfully consider um, giving to St. Andrews. Um, many of you already give regularly. It's, um, it's easy to do. Um, there's lots of ways that we can support you as well as you um, consider your gift to St. Andrew, uh, St. Andrews, um, including online giving, which is easy to sign up for and safe. You can make a one-time gift or recurring gift that way. Um, and so there's uh, a link to that on our website. It's also available through our St. Andrews app, um, which if you want to download, we can share more information about how to do that. Um, so we want to thank you for your giving and for your generosity and your continued support. Um, in that way, as well as this sense of community that um, continues to be fostered here, even in this difficult time. Um, so we thank you again um, for your offerings, and um, we thank Russ for his musical offering for tonight. 
um, that he is sharing. And, and all these songs that Russ Lank is singing for us tonight, he wrote. So it is truly a part of his stewardship is sharing his gift of music. So thank you for that, Russ. All of these, everybody has a share of them. Life takes many twists and turns on the go. But we know live by the promises of our Lord. Some days life just chooses up and spits us out. Our ways can take us to a place of fear and doubt. But we know where to stand on the promises It's children's time, and so um, I chose a story night that um, is somewhat for the adults because it gives a little background uh, from our Old Testament lesson tonight. Um, and so we're going to talk about Isaac's blessing, um, Isaac and Esau. We heard a little bit about them this evening, um, and so now we have pictures to go with that story uh, this evening. So Isaac's blessing. And I'll bring the book right up here so you can see the pictures there. Rebecca and Isaac asked God for a child. God gave them not one baby, but two. Twins. Kick, jab. Rebecca could feel the babies pushing and pulling on each other inside of her. God, she prayed, why are my babies fighting? They're in a race to be born first, God answered. Your family will be different. Your younger son will be the leader of the older one. This was a surprise to Rebecca. The oldest child was usually the leader of all the brothers and sisters. Well, Esau was first born. He was hairy and red. Well, Jacob was born next. He had smooth skin. The race was so close that Jacob was actually holding on to Esau's foot. <laughs> Before long, the twins grew into men. They were very different. Esau was big and strong. Esau made Isaac look very Esau, Esau made Isaac very proud because he was a hunter. And Jacob was smaller than Esau and very quiet. And Rebecca, his mom, loved that Jacob stayed around the house. When Isaac became old and blind, it was time to give his blessing 
to his oldest child, passing on the leadership of the family. Since Isaac couldn't see, he rubbed Esau's hairy, hairy arms to make sure he, that he had the right son. Esau, he said, bring me dinner and I will bless you. And Rebekah was listening. Jacob, she whispered, hurry, cover your arms with hairy goat skins you, to fool your father. Rebekah remembered that God said Jacob would make a better leader for the family than Esau. So Jacob dressed up like Esau and brought his father Isaac dinner, and their plan worked. Jacob tricked Isaac into making him the new leader of the family. And you can see the picture here. I'm zooming in. You can just hold oh, it. Oh, okay. There you go. And you can see the, the goat hair on the arms. I guess uh, Esau had some very hairy arms. And he's giving him some porridge there to his father, who was blind. And then you can see Rebecca back there kind of looking in to see what was going on. And so Jacob kind of tricked his father. He manipulated his father. It doesn't seem very fair to cheat in a, anything, like cheat in a game or cheat on a test at school. And yet the stories in the Bible and Jacob gets Isaac's blessing through this. Now, for us, none of us have to trick anybody to get a blessing from God. Each and every one of us is blessed by God, our Father. And so, let us pray. Gracious Lord, we thank you uh, for the stories that we read about in the Bible, stories about each one of us that we hear. We pray that uh, as we uh, continue to live and love each other, that you continue to bless us and bless everyone in this world. And then we pray, amen. amen. <laughs> now we turn to our offertory prayer. Gracious God, as we come to you today in prayer, we admit that giving is complicated. At times it is easier to remember our shame or guilt around giving as opposed to your joy or generosity. Remind us that we do not give out of shame or guilt. We do not give out of obligation. We do not give to feel worthy. And we do not give to buy your grace. We give out of a desire to participate. We give as a sign of gratitude. We give because we belong to one another, and we give to build a more just and equitable world. We give because we love, and that's what love does. So take these gifts and remind us that we belong to one another. Remind us that all money narratives are welcome at this table. Remind us that whatever shame or guilt we bring with us will be washed away with your empathy and love. Remind, Remind us and then and help, help us to build that more beautiful world. In hope we pray. pray. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also, and also with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We lift, we lift them, them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Creator God, prayer has never been easy for us. Our mind flutters with news updates and questions of faith our thoughts like a river that won't stop. So today, we take a deep breath. Inhaling your name into the cobwebs of our lungs, willing your presence to wipe away the dust of self-doubt and fear, and with that breath, we ask you that you would tell us again. Tell us again how you moved over the waters. Tell us again how you led them with a pillar of fire. Tell us again of that still, small voice, and then tell us of the prophets. Tell us of Mary and Joseph and that angel chorus. Tell us of the blind man and the leper and the crowds that you healed. Tell us what it was like to walk on water. Tell us of the little children that ran to you. Tell us of the justice you preached. Tell us of the hosannas and the palm branches, of the love that changed the world. Tell us again, because we are a forgetful people. 
It is part of our human nature. That is why we long for this space week after week, so that we might be reminded of who we are and whose we are. So tell us again, for our anxiety is loud, our scarcity is loud, our fear is loud, our anger is loud, our shame is loud. Our loneliness and self-doubt are loud, mental illness is loud, doubt is loud, so tell us again. Tell us again how it all began. Tell us of manna in the wilderness and the disciples around the table. Tell us again of your love for this world. Tell us again how it changed everything. Tell us again so that we have the strength to tell others. And as you do, pour out your spirit on this table. Tether your spirit to our fragile bones. Be with us in these ordinary symbols of extraordinary love and give us the strength to remember your story anew. And so we remember on the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. As we prepare to eat together as your disciples did, we remember and we speak that truth out loud, praying together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We believe that Christ is present and comes to us through ordinary things. And I think the rain just started. It again. did. It's pouring. Yeah, just as we were saying, as I was saying that, the, the Lord's Prayer together, it started to rain again, so that's really beautiful. Um, and so again, we continue now um, as we celebrate God's gift of communion. Father, forgive me. For I know not what I do. Every time I make a move Without first consulting you It makes me feel so foolish chose to leave please and keep me ever mindful that my Lord Jesus chose to leave and his blood washed me clean
For you, and the blood of Christ shed for you. So now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. And let us pray. Holy God, as we leave this table, help us to remember this moment. Help us to remember that with you, all are invited. Help us remember that with you, there is a seat for everyone. Help us remember that with you, there is enough food to go around. And that even Judas was invited to the meal. And that there is manna in the wilderness. Help us remember so that as we go, we can build tables like this in the world. We need more tables like this in the world. Gratefully we pray. Amen. So now may the God of all creation, in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved, who strengthens us for service, gives you reason to rejoice and be glad, the blessing of God, sovereign Savior and Holy Spirit, be with you today and always. Amen. Amen. Our sending song is Blessed Assurance. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.
Connie and I used to do prison ministry. This song was the uh, parole night song. <laughs> Maybe this time I'm gonna get it right In fact you can count on it And maybe this time I've finally seen the light In fact you can count on it When I walk away from here, let me make this crystal clear. I will never see this place again. Once I leave these walls behind, they won't ever cross my mind. I found a way to make this end. Lord, I know I had to do my time for the things that I have done. But since you came to see me, I know I finished being on the run. I know you love me, I know you love me, and you know that I love you. Got you beside me, and God above me with the Spirit here to see me through. This time I'm gonna get it right. In fact, you can count on it. In fact, you can count on it. In fact, you can count.